Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial for the Moo.js library. Moo.js implements a JavaScript virtual machine that you can run in your C and C++ programs. Scripts are such as the following, where I've got a function called hello world which returns a simple string, hello world. The tools I'll be using today are Codeblocks 13.12 and the compiler I'm using will be MinGW 4.8.1. The first step in the process is to create a global variable. The global variable that I use is moojs103. Uh, the base folder where I have installed moojs is c drive backslash mingw hyphen 4.8.1 backslash libraries backslash moojs hyphen 1.0.3. The includes field here is where to find the header files for the library which is cdrive backslash mingw hyphen 4.8.1 backslash libraries backslash moojs hyphen 1.0.3 the, li the lib field here the lib field is the location of the, libra of the library files the, the .lib, the .so and the .a files where you will find binaries of the compiled library for moojs in this case cdrive backslash mingw 4.8.1 backslash libraries backslash moojs hyphen 1.0.3 Moving on to my build options. I've got two different builds, a debug and a release build. In order that my program can find the header files for the moojs library, I use the global variable that I created here with a macro, which is moojs103, and I request the .include path. I replicate that between the debug and also the release builds of my project. In order that my project can locate the lib, the, the lib files, the .so or the .a files, I use the macro from my global variable moojs103 and I request the .lib field and I replicate that between the debug and the release versions of my project. Now the library that I'm linking against here is moojs, which I link here, and my debug build and also again in my release build. In order to use the moojs library, you include the header moojs.h. I make use here of two function callbacks. Usually these would be, if I was working on a larger project, these might sit in the game singleton or the application singleton that I was working on. In this case, I've made these global variables solely because this is a demo. The first function here, uh, moojs panic, that handles serious errors. Um, I Whenever I produce an error and I send that to a log, I use error colon and that really helps when I'm doing a grep or a search through any of my logs. Uh, I'm also, uh, and the next the next callback that I'm using here is um, UJS report that handles any warnings. So I print warning messages to the console. I always, uh, whenever I'm sending a warning to the console, I use warning colon so that way I can do a grep or a search in order to identify warnings. Uh, the next step is the program entry point, which is my int main function. Um, now I create a new state for a, f I create a uh, JS state, uh, which is going to be the object that will contain, will contain and run our JavaScript file. Those of you who use the Lua library will also notice that you use the LUA underscore new state method when you're trying to create a Lua state. Um, when you're trying to create your little virtual machine that will run your script. Um, so the state objects are common to both libraries. The first, uh, the, the, then the next function that I call here is the JS at panic. That's me setting the panic method, the panic callback, moojs panic, which is this function up here. So that whenever um, the virtual machine uh, crashes, encounters some serious error, it will go up here to this function and it will grab the error string from the stack. Uh, now when when a, um, when a when your virtual machine crashes or has a problem, uh, MooJS will simply push the warning, me warning message onto the stack. So here I'm calling JS underscore two string because I can be confident that the first method on the, that the first item on the stack is going to be the error which I will then print to string. Uh, in a simpler fashion, I call I use the uh, JS underscore set report method to set the callback here for uh, move JS underscore report, which will print warnings to the console. Um, now, the next method that I'm going to call is the JS underscore do file, and what the do file method will do is it will load and also compile your JavaScript file, which here I've got my JavaScript.js file 
into a uh, into the virtual machine, which is bound, which is the state we created here, p mu js state. The uh, js underscore do file method is very similar to the same method called Lua underscore do file that occurs with the Lua libraries. In the event that the pro in the event that this method returns uh, a one, then there was a problem. If it returns zero, other and then it was successful in both loading and passing the file. So it would say return a zero in the event that you uh, you had an error in your JavaScript file or that the file itself might not actually exist. The next step is uh, what we're going to do is we're going to call our JavaScript function over here which is called hello world. We do that by firstly getting the global variable uh, rather getting a global function we get the global function from the virtual machine called hello world we then push that function onto the stack using js underscore push null. Um, the next step if we had parameters that would be passed to the hello world function is we would push parameters onto the stack. In this case the function that I'm calling is simply hello world and has no function parameters. Therefore we can call js underscore call and we pass to it the um, the virtual machine, the state of the state object associated with our JavaScript file, and we state that there are zero parameters on the stack, so uh, that will then call that will then execute the method. Um, now, uh, what will happen here is you'll see that we've declared a function called hello world, which returns a string called hello world. When that function is called here via js underscore call the returning function here is pushed onto the stack and so what I'm able to then do is, is I'm able to call js underscore to string I'm able to pass to it the virtual machine or the js underscore state pointer and then I'm able to get the top value on the stack which in this case will be hello world zzzzz once I'm done with the virtual machine or my uh, JS state, I'm then just able to call free state on that, and then that um, then my state is my state and my virtual machine is shut down and released. Um, when I go up to build, then I'll go up to run, and we'll show you what the program does. So as you can see here, the result of the function call is hello world z z z z z z. We can change that. To make that whatever we like. So I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll then save that and then we'll go to main and we will run the program again. And you'll see that the result of the function call is hello world one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Thank you for your time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. Any projects that you develop with this uh, as a result of this tutorial, I'm certainly interested in what you're up to. Thanks for your time. Until next time, take care.